There we go. All right, so this is just our weekly call. Um, I don't have a ton on the agenda today. I think the biggest thing for me was that acceptances have started to go out for Open Source Summit North America. Mm -hmm. So I know Andy. Okay. We're in. Yep, so that's good news. So yep. the talk about value working group has been accepted, which is great. Um, I had a talk accepted just on chaos overall, like just kind of the state of the project, which is also really good. Yep. And then Sean had, um, I think it's kind of like a workshop accepted. It's 85 minutes on Augur. So Andy, you're in my talks. I don't think they're 85 minutes. At least I hope they're not 85 minutes. <laughs> No, I think it's more like an hour. Okay. Yeah, so not, not brutally long, but... Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and the diversity and inclusion proposal also got accepted. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Is it a panel? I don't think we had a panel this time. It's just a talk. Um, yeah, I'm trying okay. to find it right now. Okay. We are calling it preparing a community diversity and inclusion report with chaos metrics. Okay. Okay. Who is it? Do you remember? Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> so long ago. It was like two months ago, maybe a month ago. Okay. Um, well, that's good. I, I think everybody's had some good success. I don't know. Daniel, do you know if anybody from Grimoire Lab had submitted anything to Open Source Summit North America? Um, yeah, um, I know some people sent something. I don't know if they have received any notification. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, so that's good. So happy about that. Um, and then I guess while we're still kind of on the topic of, does anybody else have anything with Open Source Summit North America? That's great. I look forward to seeing everybody there. So then the day prior to Open Source Summit North America is Chaos Con. Um, I have, just from my end, I put together a, with the help of other people, a sponsorship prospectus. I think Georg actually put together the draft and then we just kind of worked it down. So thanks, Georg. Yep. And I sent it out to, yep, I've sent it out to a variety of people at this point. So we're really just, the Linux Foundation provides the venue at no cost, but then we need to, find some money for coffee and stuff like that, you know, just to keep people happy during the day. Um, so anyway, those have been sent out. I suspect some will come through, so I'm not terribly concerned about that. Um, Daniel, you had mentioned that you might ask Grimoire Lab, or I'm sorry, Petergia. Um, yeah, I asked, but I, I still don't have any answer. Okay, okay, not a problem. Like I said, I don't think it's gonna be a, a huge concern. Um, so that's moving forward. Um, and then I know Georg has put together a call for proposals. Georg, do you want to share that here or do you want to wait? You're muted, Georg. Thank you. Yeah, I can share that here in the chat real quick. This is uh, an email that I'm planning to send out to the mailing list if you have any edits and thank you Matt and Daniel for already revising it and making suggestions. Um, the call for proposal this year is very short <clears throat> time-wise. We only have two weeks because we were a little late in the game, but that's okay. We'll still manage if we just uh, advertise it enough. Hey, could you put on here while I'm thinking about it, how long we would want to talk to be? Are we going to do lightning talks or? That's all in the CFP. Okay, um, I see. So if you go to the CFP, we have that detail there. Um, oh, I gotcha. Oh, I see, lightning talks, five minutes, regular session. Hands on do, you think, 
it would make sense to just copy paste this entire yeah. sheet P at the bottom of the email. Probably so. Okay. We attach okay. the uh, uh, CFP as a attachment or a PDF document with the email instead of pasting the entire. Yeah, PDF would be good. I don't know how well that comes off of the web page as a PDF. Uh, PDF can be con like page can be converted into a PDF pretty easily. Yeah, or we can copy paste and format it in a PDF. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I'm torn. I like that a PDF looks nicer. I also like that having it attached at the bottom of the email means you can just scroll down to read it. I, I don't know which one is better. Believe it or not, I don't have a huge opinion on this. <laughs> Not something that I think about too often, so I don't really, I don't particularly care. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, including the information in some form or fashion in the email would be great. Yep. I'll opt for just including the text unless someone wants to put together a PDF. Has anybody done reach out for Keynote yet? Who's doing that? We, I think, Lazarus. Okay. Sneeze. Okay. We had two ideas for keynote speakers, okay. but I don't remember who is reaching out. Okay. I mean, that's a little less urgent than the call. Okay. Oh, and then by the way, too, um, because I got the that talk accepted, I went ahead and registered as a speaker, and the Chaos Con registration is in the so that's all taken care of too. Awesome, yeah. thank you. I saw that. I also just registered. Is there a separate registration form that we can link to from our website? Um, like a not speaker one? Uh, not open source summit, North America. I think everything's gonna go through there, isn't it? Or do you wanna last year we had two registration forms? Oh one we did for those who just wanted it as an add-on to their open source summit uh -huh. registration and a separate one that we used on the website. And I think we got about 20% of our registrations through the website last year. Oh, really? Okay. Um, no, I don't think we've done that yet. At least, I, at least I haven't done it. So unless somebody else has done it, since you're in contact with the Linux Foundation, can you ask them about it? Did we was it a Linux Foundation separate thing, or did we just run it by ourselves? It was something they provided us with. Okay, I'll I'll ask them. Awesome, thank you. And if they can't do it, we just make a Google form. <laughs> okay. The nice thing was because they had the system, they were able to print us name tags right. like badges. What happened? Well, I'm sorry, I missed that. What? The Linux Foundation last year printed badges. Oh, yeah, I'll make sure they do that again. Yeah. Um, I'm adding something to the call. Do do do. All right, there. Just okay. to submit your proposal. Up on top. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I do. Thank you. Okay. So that, I think that's it, kind of for conferency things. Does anybody else have anything on ChaosCon or the Open Source Summit? Alrighty. Um. So then I guess I'll ask, oh shoot, I, I have an action item that I still need to do. I'm gonna put together a, a document called releasing.md.markdown. And I'm gonna put it in the metrics repository. And it's gonna be a document that describes kind of what the criteria are for releasing a metric on that version, 
whatever version. I'm just gonna go with version one on a release. And it's it's not a complicated document, so I'll I'll put that together and then let folks know. Um, so you can make comments on it. But basically the premise is, is that if you're gonna release a metric as part of the release schedule, that there is a focus group or a focus area, sorry, there's a focus area, which everybody's following anyway. The metric is um, within a particular focus area and is addressing a particular question, which is what everybody is doing anyway. Uh, and then there's a detail page behind that metric that gives a, a little bit richer description about the metric itself. And that's it. Those are the, those are the criteria for releasing a metric. So it shouldn't be a long document, but I still have to do that. I should take care of that sooner rather than later. And Georg, we could probably put that in that releasing markdown document, maybe the timing of when we're looking for these. And then probably also in that document, a link to that spreadsheet that people can identify what is to be released. And is the goal for this releasing MD to live in all of our work group repositories? I was just going to put it in the metrics repository. That's okay. where I was going to do it. Just so we have one kind of canonical place. How about if there's only one place, we put it in the community handbook? Yeah, we can totally do that. Yep. Since it's process. And yep. And it's yeah, process, actually, yeah. That's, that's a great spot for it. OK. Um, good idea. Uh, OK, so I'll, I'll take care of that in the next 24 hours or so. Since we're on the topic of the community handbook, I started a draft for um, how we organize ChaosCon. This is a very rough draft right now. I'm going to find the link here real quick. Um, where I thought about, okay, what are all the things that we're doing? And I wrote a sentence or two about how we've done it in the past. Mm -hmm. um, this is still early, very rough draft. I just wanted to let you all know that this is in the works. Okay. So just trying to capture the process. Yep, the process and the steps involved in organizing ChaosCon. Okay. Great. Can you also post a link just for everybody and for posterity to the community handbook on GitHub? I can do it too. Oops. Um, did you find it? I did. I the one just in the okay. components, right? This, correct? Yes. Okay. So then underneath like the table of contents, would we have a bullet for say releasing metrics, like general handbook usage and then another top level bullet that would be releasing metrics? Yes. And then another top level bullet that would be like planning a chaos con or something like that? Yep, that's okay. what I think it would look like. Okay. And we can always reorganize later. Well then, okay, so then I wouldn't actually, okay, no, that makes sense, sorry. I was gonna say I wouldn't make a markdown page, but I would, Never mind. Okay. Okay, well that sounds good. I will work in that. Um, any, anything pressing from other folks here? On Friday, the new stack released a podcast where Nicole and I were interviewed about the diversity inclusion working group. 
Okay. We got a full 23 minutes on the podcast. It's a very specific amount of full time. <laughs> yeah, it was scheduled for 10 to 15 minutes and we just had so much to talk about. <laughs> um, did that go, is that up on the chaos website at all? Uh, when you go, let's see, did I put it there? We have a page on the website, the media page. Um, and yes, the podcast is there. Okay. Gotcha. But it's hidden away a little bit. Maybe we need to add a community post to highlight it or something. That's a good yeah, idea. Yeah, maybe put it under chaos, just on that front page. Under yep. chaos news. Yep. I mean, why not just keep that front and center? Okay, I'll do that. Okay. Um, all right. Any any anything else on that, Georg? Nope, that's it. Okay. Uh, Math, I have a question concerning the kiosk on. Yeah. Do we have any agenda? Like, are we planning to present something, accept uh, papers or talks yeah. or things like that? Yep. So Georg's going to send out a call for papers or call for proposals probably today. I don't know today or tomorrow. After we all looked at it, I'm ready to submit it after the meeting. Okay. And so there'll be like, I think in terms of presentations, if I remember right, it was 20 minute presentations that you could submit to Armstrong. Okay. And uh, anything in within the scope of open source, right? Yeah. I mean, within the, it's usually within the scope of probably health or chaos related things. Okay. You know, so I mean, I think like the ecosystem health stuff, the seco health stuff, that certainly qualifies. Okay. All right, cool. Um, all right, great. Uh, working groups, anything pressing or exciting on the working group level right now? I know these are slowly moving along, slowly but surely, I should say. Don't mean to imply slowness. It's all right if not. Um, all right, software, anybody, anything? I know Sean's not here today. Mm -hmm. um, Daniel, uh, anything from the yeah, in, in terms of, of Rumor Lab, a couple of updates. Uh, so we, we've had in the last couple of weeks uh, new information there. So we are now tracking uh, who is reviewing and what type of reviews that people are doing in Garrett. Same for GitHub. So we have the code review information, all of the information. So people submitting, people reviewing that we didn't have for some reason in Rumor Lab. And the other thing is uh, comments in a Jira issue that we, we didn't have, but those are added. Um, well, at some point, so it's the whole process. So we have the raw data and reads um, and new panels for all of this. New so is the reviewing, is it like the review process when somebody's assigned it to review a, a change? Yeah, well, mainly, so in Garrett uh, Garrett terminology, what we have are chain sets, which is the whole code review process, let's say. Mm -hmm. A chain set is using iteration. So then you have patch sets. One iteration is one patch set. And then for each of them, you have approvals, like, uh, well, people voting. So you have plus one, minus one, plus two, minus two. Okay. If you are doing a plus two or minus two, that means that you are a core reviewer. Um, then when you have some policy that then you, you give access to, to this piece of code, to the source code, so this can be merged. Um, yeah, and this is, and then the comments and the, and so on. And well, we do have as well uh, CI information as well uh, bots verifying that this is passing all of the tests and blah, 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 which is part of the approval 
section, kind of this. In, in GitHub, what we have now is all of the review process. Uh, well, someone asking for new things and so on. And in the case of Jira, this is uh, related to the comments in, well, basically all of the, all of the comments done in an issue that we typically aggregated in certain metrics like number of comments or similar stuff. But now we have that info. So this is for Grimoire Lab. Okay. Is it all being aggregated in Percival? Uh, so Percival is a tool retrieving the information. So that means that for the backend of Gerrit in Percival, uh, this has new code. For the backend of uh, GitHub in Percival, this has new code, same okay. for Jira. And then uh, the same for the rest of the infrastructure. So we are enriching those raw indexes produced by Percival. And then having either new panels or widgets, depend on. Okay, is it panels it. based on like what? What is the panel? Is it reviews? Like, what would the panel be? Uh, well, I don't exactly remember. Okay. But uh, as far as I remember, the the pretty basic stuff we are running right now is a number of code reviews done by each developer. So then you have things like number of commits, number of reviews, like plus one, minus one, plus two, minus two. Okay. Um, all of this, yeah. Okay, so it's kind of a representation of the human activity associated with doing a review, less yeah. about the review itself. Uh, yeah, but at the same time, you can have all of the information for a review itself. Okay. So everything is, is stored as a JSON document, so. Okay. What we have now is a new JSON entry for each of the code review actions, events. So then if, for instance, if you look for the event, for the code review, for the chain set 10,015, for instance, then you will see all of the actions on that specific chain set. Okay. So then this depends on how you want to visualize the information. That's gotcha. Cool. Okay, well, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, cool. That's good. It was a long time requirement from the people, but for some reason we didn't have the time. Now it's it's it just took a long time to get that information. Uh, no, it's it's like we were focusing on some other stuff. Oh, I gotcha. <laughs> and now we have the time for this. So yeah, it's prioritizing when you can get this done. I got yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it was. Okay. More, yeah. All right, cool. Um, so is that change been updated in the GitHub repository? Uh. What do you mean by that? Like in the documentation or somewhere else? No, I mean, in, the in, are there. in the Grimoire lab, in the Percival. Yeah, yeah. So if, if you look at the at the commit side, I mean, yeah. the list of commits for Percival, you will see changes related to the same in okay. or new panels and so on. Okay, that sounds cool. There you go. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay. Yeah, probably we need an, a, a better way to announce new things in the software. But, uh, yeah, as opposed to just being subscribed to the repository. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can always use the list to announce these things. I think people would have a, I have a tremendous interest in how the software is advancing as well, whether hmm. it's Grimoire Lab or Augur. Hmm. Yeah, I agree with um, you. Would somebody at, Baturgia ever want to put together just like a, a two week highlight? You know what I mean? Like every two weeks or something like that? Or Yeah, we've, we've tried to do that, but uh, after a while, it's like you abandon that. I, I know. I know. Um, maybe. Does anybody have any ideas on this? I, I, would, I would be in complete favor of trying to get the word out more aggressively on the changes that the software hmm. that's being implemented in the software, again, whether it's Augur or hmm. Grimoire Lab, being able to express that. In this case, perhaps we, we have the issue as well that uh, we are, as we told you, uh, advertising that we have new features that are done in Grimoire Lab, but uh, we have this Viteria analytics thing. So once we have everything, for instance, in our Twitter, it's like everything gets diluted in somehow. Mm -hmm. But if we have a place for Grimoire Lab and Augur, like, well, these are the new features we have, which yeah. probably, probably is much better. What if we... Uh, go ahead, Gary. I was just wondering whether Grimoire Lab was keeping a change log with the version history and features 
in each version. Yeah, for this, as this is a bunch of tools. It's like uh, looking for the Git log in each of the tools we have. So yeah. What if um in in this meeting we don't have to do it right now, but like um on the like every two weeks kind of thing, mm -hmm. we actually spend some time in this meeting asking for folks from Grimoire Lab, Baturgia, and Augur to just spell out what the, kind of like what you, exactly what you had just done, Daniel. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we can not only send the notes from the meeting, like we, we do every, every week, but we could also send an independent, a, a separate email that was just kind of pulling out the software components. I mean, I could easily do that. So, yeah, probably we can use some of the weekly meetings on Tuesday. Like, well, the second, for instance, the so this is the like the second is, Tuesday. Yeah, this right? is the second, and so maybe we could do it next week when Sean is on, and then we could get you to sign off on. So, like, if I'm just looking at the minutes right now, hmm. like Gr Grimoire Lab has a few updates in there. I don't know if you see in the minutes or the notes, but you can just before we leave the meeting you could sign up, like sign off. <laughs> that that would be an okay email to send out to the community for mm -hmm. those points. Yeah. And Sean could do the same. Yeah, what do you think if we, for instance, have like the third Tuesday of the month? That'd be great. Or this uh, marketing related fee, like uh, marketing related yeah. thing to chaos. Yeah. Just, just focused on software. Yeah. Yep, and then we would just send an independent email that's here are the software update for, yeah, for the last month, for instance. Yeah. yeah, actually, that'd be great. I'd actually, why don't we, why don't we do that? Let's jot that down. Makes sense. Um, so the third. Well, if it makes sense to all of the attendees here. Because so. then that'll take the pressure off of asking somebody at Augur or Baturgia to do it out of band. <laughs> in the because you're right. I mean, people forget to do it. They just stop doing it. But if these meetings are at least regular and we can mm. capture them during this time, that would be great. So, for instance, Valerio from Liberia, he was during the last week here. He was a bit uh, like, uh, what can I say? What I cannot say? Because you were discussing about other things. He was not uh, sure about how to proceed. Okay. So, but having, for instance, this specific. Uh, or Tuesday each month, it's much easier for me to say, hey, we have this day, so you have to come. Okay. That's a great idea. And having these emails would be good for probably to have like from from ChaosCon to ChaosCon, like a list of features, like, hey, we have mm -hmm. these aggregated the six emails. So well, right, yeah. that would be easy to assemble because once we start doing this every month, it would be easy to go back into the notes and assemble everything that's been advanced mm -hmm. between the chaos cons. Okay, we can try. Yeah, yeah, I think let's try. Does anybody have any objection to that? <laughs> Doesn't seem like an objectionable kind of thing, but <laughs> I mean, really, this is just trying to get the word out and trying to put we're out in front of people. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, great. All right, cool. Okay. Um, anything else from folks? Georg, what did you just share? Media? Uh, that was uh, from when we talked about the podcast. That oh. We have a page on chaos website where we keep track of media mentions including nice. this podcast gotcha okay um everybody good i'm good these are kind of my updates all right everybody uh till perhaps next tuesday perhaps <laughs> the next meeting whatever that might be so we'll talk to you later okay see you all right okay. bye bye, -bye.